Okay, welcome to session number four. It's Thursday, and now things are beginning to heat up. All right. Um, before we open the Zoom meeting, we asked you to do the quiz. Uh, we want to get a feel about uh, how you are engaging with the with the little tutorials. And at the moment on the screen, you can see that um, 20 of you have attempted the quiz. And um, let's have a look at the, the questions. We'll use it as a form of revision. So the first question was, um, which of the following is not a benefit of open educational resources? And um, most of you got that right. 13 of you got that right. A small fee is required. No, if you are using OERs, there is never any money involved at all. All right. OERs are free. That's one of the givens. That's always a given. So some people did say can make copies and share, uh, but you are that you are allowed to. That is a benefit. Um, uh, so keep that in mind. Then maybe you misread the question. And then the other one was um, uh, they are free. That is true. And uh, no answer. OK. All right. So that doesn't seem to be causing any trouble. Which of the following are not benefits of open education? All right. So keep that in mind then. Open education is different from open educational resources. It's a much bigger concept. All right. The idea of open education is that it is open, uh, which is the one that is not and provides access to all campuses. That's a load of rubbish. Since when has that even been possible ever? So uh, no, you, uh, most of you got that one right. Okay, there's no such thing. What it does do is it allows people to study off campus or not even having to go to a campus. All right, so that's one of the benefits. Um, this license here, um, this, this CC license is the same as full copyright. Um, it's very restrictive. It's by NCSA, the, the little pictures being chopped off. But um, that is not the same as full copyright. Full copyright means all rights reserved, and therefore you may do nothing without asking for permission. So even though this one by NCSA is very restrictive, uh, you can still make copies and hand it out to all your mates without asking for permission. It's free, et cetera, et cetera. So it's still better than full copyright. So don't confuse them. All open licenses, even if they are restrictive, uh, are considered open. All right. Google Advanced Search, free to use, share, or modify, even commercially, is equivalent to, and the correct answer was CC BY. All right. If you look at that, <clears throat> there's many things you can do. It's free. You can use it. You can share it. You can change it. You can even use it commercially. So therefore, it is um, uh, uh, very open. There is hardly any restrictions at all. So the closest is CC BY. The, the majority of you got it, but a few of you got caught out by CC0. Remember, CC0 is equivalent to public domain. All right, so keep that in mind. Not quite the same. Um, on YouTube, the CC filter identifies videos with the following licenses. All right. And uh, quite a lot of you went for public domain license. All right. No. Um, uh, if you remember, I said the funny thing about YouTube is that it only gives you two options. It's either fully copyrighted or it is just creative commons. This is a general CC license. It doesn't say which one. All right, so that's kind of a little weird, but um, generally we, we kind of think that as CC BY. All right, so a general CC license is correct. Six of you got that right, so be a little bit careful. The CC license doesn't necessarily point at public domain. Remember, public domain means no rights reserved. So um, it's not the same as those other open licenses. Um, then we asked you, which of the following five R's allows adaptation? All right. Only one of those uh, four. I gave you four. So I skipped one of them out. All right. So um, the correct answer was remix. Okay. So um, revise was a bit obvious. So we didn't use that one. We went for remix. Uh, eight of you got that correct. And some of you others went for the other bits and pieces, retain, reuse, redistribute. They've got nothing to do with adaptation. Redistribute just simply means you can hand it out to other people. Uh, reuse means you can just take it as it is and just reuse it. 
a retain means you can keep a copy for yourself. So that's got nothing to do with changing the resource. When creating an OER, which issue is not a consideration? All right. Will it be in a format that encourages adaptation? Okay. Now that is a consideration. Remember, OERs, if you're going to change them, we want them in a format that is adaptable. All right. Is it good quality? No one went for that one. And good, because uh, in the end, uh, we want it to be of good quality. That's the whole point. We want you to put out your very best. Is it truly open, allowing users permission to adapt? Um, it doesn't. It, um, it, that, yes, that is uh, a consideration. Uh, the more restrictive it is, the less desirable it is. So be a little bit careful there. Most of you got this one right. Is it fully branded with your logo? You can put your logo on with pleasure, but it isn't a consideration for its openness. All right. I often put the branding of my clients or myself on there, um, but that's not something you have to particularly worry about. Okay. And um, what does a free cultural work mean? So when you went through the videos, hopefully you picked out that uh, it means there are almost no restrictions and the vast majority of you got that right. Some of you went for it's kind to the environment. Huh? Where, is, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> okay. All right. So keep that in mind then. Um, uh, right. And that was tutorials one, two, and three. So let me just come out there. Let's have a look at the summary. <clears throat> um, the difficult questions was that YouTube one, it's telling me here, uh, there's the player so we can say well done to Abgirl and to at taps and to GS and to Nessie and Emily and touch and Chad's. Um, they're all in the 70s and 80s. All right, so well done, guys. That uh, shows that you're really on top of the game. In terms of a final score, Abgirl was the quickest through, and she got, uh, I'm assuming, yeah, she got 100% and a nice big score. So well done, all right? And um, so good. There's another Cahoots test in the bag. All right, so today, um, I'm going to very quickly just go over um, what was in tutorial number three, but just one piece. Um, I mean, as I say, this is not a lecture. I just want to just highlight the one piece. So I'm just going to go back here. Give me a second. Here's our page. All right. Um, and last night you looked at number three. So um, the one I want you to have a look at was license your own resource. Okay, now the reason I want to go over this again, just to make sure everyone is clear, is because this is one of the criteria for the assignment. So if you miss this bit out, you're not going to get your marks for it. All right, so make sure then that for the final assignment that you can do this. All right, so the, what I uh, asked you to look at was the Creative Commons license generator. So you know all those nice little um, license uh, plates that you see. How do you get your own one on your own device? All right. So uh, there were um, two videos. One was for the traditional license generator, and then Creative Commons are experimenting with a new one. So there was a second video if you're going to use the beta version. All right. But I'll just demonstrate it very quickly. And because I need you to all be aware of how this bit works. All right, so you go to creativecommons.org. Your, your intent, your objective is to get yourself a CC license, all right, for your PowerPoint or for your worksheet or for your website or whatever, all right? So you've made your, your OER, you've used Word and you've used PowerPoint, you've used some digital application and now you want to get it up. All right, so say for example, let me just call up my PowerPoint and then um, I'm going to do it so you can see someone actually go through the steps. So I'll just open, uh, let me open one that already exists. All right, so um, uh, I've been working on this PowerPoint and now I'm ready to uh, put my little license on. 
All right, so how do I do that? So I make sure um, this is open, but I then just minimize it. Then I go to creativecommons.org and I go to share your work. All right, so you come in here and it gives you a little blah, blah, blah. It tells you what steps are gonna go through. So you say, all right, I'm ready, let's get started. So uh, here is the traditional uh, license generator and it asks you a few questions, three in fact, and by that it can determine what license it should give you. All right. So the first question is, are you going to allow people to adapt it? Are you going to allow people to repurpose, to make changes, to create derivatives? And then you can say either yes, no, or yes, as long as others share alike. All right. I'm going to go for that one. And you see on this side here, it generates the little license for you. So at the moment, it's attribution share alike. Here's the little, the little license, all right? Am I going to allow commercial uses of my work? All right. If I was to say no, then you'll see it adds the non-commercial logo into the, into the goodie here, all right? But I don't care. I can say yes. So um, here is my little license so it's that simple however because i've got the little man attribution i should really give some information about who i am and what's going on so if you click on here then this other little thing drops down so what is the title of your work so you go and have a look at your uh your worksheet or your uh, thing mine's called learning design capacity program orientation all right so then i come up here Learning Design Capacity Program, all right, and Orientation. So I give it a title. It needs a title. Then you come down to, so who is the holder of the copyright? Now, it could be me. So I could put my name in here. Or it might be your institution. So I could say... I could put in the, the institution. That particular PowerPoint was for work I'm doing at the uh, UFS. So I could actually say that is the copyright holder. Then is there an, uh, a URL that it should be attributed to? So I can go here and go to ufs.ac.za. I think that's their website. Yeah, okay. Um, doesn't look very nice when it's that big make it a bit smaller right so there's a blah 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 okay cool so i can just take this as oops as my url and i can just paste it in all right so there's the name of my um work here is who holds the copyright here is a link to uh, the copyright holder all right if i am um, have adapted something specific then i can also put in the 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 origin of the original i can put that in here but no mine's unique so i'll leave that blank uh, should i be adding more permission url now a lot of websites have a page which is about um, terms of reference or um, privacy or um, terms of use actually so uh, you could if you want put another one in there i'm not particularly interested uh, at the moment so format of the work what type of OER is it? Is it audio, video, image, text, data set, interactive? Uh, mine's just a good old, <laughs> good old fashioned PowerPoint. So I'm going to go for multiple formats because there's a little bit of animation and there's a little video and there's some pictures and blah, blah, blah. All right. And then it says, um, how are you going to um, uh, use the license? Is it going into a HTML, a website? or a, a RDFA, uh, that means like a rich text um, uh, document, like maybe Word or something, um, then you can say there, or you can say, no, it's going offline, all right? So normally we go for one of those two, all right? If you go for this one, I normally always choose this first one. So um, now you'll see what it's done is in this panel here, it's created the license for you. So you could just grab the fact if you go like that and go control c which is copy all right then you can come to your 
to your um, your last slide and you can go control v all right and it, oh, it's, it needs a bit of whoops a daisy control z it needs a bit of cleaning up there's the the little license plate and here's the text make sure i get it yeah it needs to be shortened All right, now notice all the little links. All the little links uh, are working. So there's a link to the website. Here is a link to the uh, Creative Commons uh, site, etc. So what I've done now then is I have been able to generate the little license plate using the Creative Commons license generator. And then I was able to cut and paste it into my powerpoint all right so uh, that it's as easy as that it's it's not rocket science you know it shouldn't be either because they want to try and make it as easy as possible so all right um did you see how i did that are you happy with that are there any questions or queries can you put your hand up i see tapi uh, tapiwa has has his hand up yep Okay, uh, my question is, so you have to, you have to finish your presentation first mm -hmm. and then save it. Yeah. And then you go to commons. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then you make your license. That's it. Okay. So it, it's much easier anyway to fill in all the attribution information once you have completed it. So then you, you've got a good idea of what it is. If you try and do it beforehand, uh, you, you can't, you don't, haven't really thought about a title for it yet and blah, blah, blah. So I would do your oer first either in powerpoint or word or excel or whatever digital package you cho you're choosing to use and then go to creative commons once you've completed it and you know all the data all right any other questions all right so if you only get one thing from tutorial oh there we go learn more All right, it's okay. Uh, your explanation was very clear, but uh, I didn't see where you indicated the type of creative, com uh, creative license, creative commons license. Was the, I thought maybe you're going to choose among the types from CC by what, 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 what? I didn't see that. Uh, Let me show you again. So it's based on these questions here. So um, if you go for um, no and no, then you can see here is that most restrictive one. It's normally number six. Remember, we, we learned six licenses. So this would be the most restrictive one. Look, CC, attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives. And that's because I chose no and no. But if I start lightening up a little bit and go, yes, you can see, um, or even that one, yes. Now you can see it's CC by NC. On commercial. In fact, there's it's written there for you. All right. Or you could say yes and yes. So now it's very simple. It's just CC by attribution. All right. So it's it's how you answer these two questions as to which license you get. So it's that simple. And then it's all which which combination you've chosen. Does that make sense to learn more? Yes, thank you. Very clear now. Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. All right. Any other questions? All right. So what I'm going to show you now is your, your assignment. You still got um, tutorial four to do tonight, but then you've got to start creating your OER. All right. So you've got to look at tutorial number four, which is about how do you share your resource. And you're going to share it um, there's two options. You can either share it with EduConnect, which is Mopsy's um, OER repository, or you can save it, and or you can save it with OER Commons. Remember, we looked at OER Commons, and we said that's where all the primary and secondary, not all of them, but many of them, resources are. So uh, you can do it there as well if you want. However, for our assignment, let me go back. 
and show you the assignment. I'm going to go here and just call up our agenda. Sorry. There it is. Here's our agenda and our assignment is here. So let me make this slightly smaller so it fits on the screen. All right. In fact, I'm even going to put it in the chat and the WhatsApp. So you are absolutely certain. All right, I'm putting it in the WhatsApp. There we go. All right. So what do I want from you? So there's a nice certificate. I think I showed you the certificate the other day. All right, if you want the certificate, then you have to pass this assignment. So um, the final assignment is to apply the information studied in the four tutorials to either adapt existing OER for the Zimbabwe context. So that's an option. You can say, oh, I'm going to find an OER and then I'm going to make it work for Zimbabwe. All right. So you can do that. Or you can create a new resource, something that's never been seen before. It's one of your favorite things. You probably already have it created. All right. So, uh, but you want to share it now with the rest of your colleagues in Zimbabwe and potentially also across the globe. All right. So, um, However, the new resources must be aligned to the MOPSI curriculum statement. So you remember in tutorial two, we said, go and have a look at the curriculum statements. Uh, go find the syllabi document. And then uh, from there, we asked you originally to just find some search criteria. But now we want you to find which objective, which specific objective does this resource help teachers teach? All right, so you're going to show, show us the links. All OER must be openly licensed and include the Creative Commons license plate. All right, so what I've just done now, that also has to be done. All right, these resources need to be uploaded to the EduConnect database and have the appropriate metadata captured. Metadata simply means describing words. All right, so when you go to EduConnect, it'll ask you to put in various metadata, basically describe your resource. Um, uh, and um, you've got to do two. So if you want the certificate, you've got to upload two resources. Okay. Um, uh, how are we going to mark them? Here's our assessment criteria. So uh, when me and my team, we go looking in the EduConnect database, we are looking for, uh, is there an example of two or more new quality notice the word quality if it's a load of rubbish then we're going to probably delete it um so it has to be quality it's got to look good and it's got to be accurate etc teaching and learning resources all right so um there's two marks for that clearly stated on each resource how it is aligned to the specific MOPSI curriculum statement. So somewhere on your resource, we want you to say this resource can be used to teach specific objective number 7.394 or whatever it is. Okay. So we want you to show us how you think the OER is aligned to the curriculum. Two marks for that. Uh, then we're going to look for the Creative Commons license. Is it clear? Now, if you can't get the little license plate to work like I've just done, then just type it on, but it must be there. All right. You've got to see that you have chosen a license and it doesn't matter. Any of the six is fine. Um, the uh, You can even go CC0 if you want, but um, it, we need to see it somewhere on your resource. And then successfully uploaded two resources or more into the EduConnect repository. Obviously, um, that's a bit of a fiddle in itself. So tutorial number four tells you how to do that. I've been engaging with groups one and two, and it's taken them quite a while <laughs> uh, to, uh, to uh, get them up. But they have. We've got over 100 new resources in the repository because of groups one and two. So we're hoping you guys will persevere and also get your, your ones up. All right. So what could you create? I'm just going to show you a, a couple that I think are beautiful. Let me uh, get one up for you. Uh, it's here. 
Okay, this one is, I thought it was quite good. Let's be a bit quiet. Uh, today we are looking at geometry. Uh, reference number seven, eight on the ZIMSEC syllabus, particularly looking at constructions and loci, and we are zeroing in on loci. Uh, the first locus we're looking at is the locus of a point which moves so that it is always a fixed distance from a fixed point. Fixed distance, the lady in red, and the moving point is the gentleman. The fixed distance is around two meters. The gentleman is moving in such a way that she, he keeps a distance of two meters from the lady. Can you describe the locus? Yeah, the second <laughs> locus represents a moving point such that it is equidistant from two fixed points. Okay, you're getting the, the idea. Three. And then he also had another one here where he says, which moves so that it is always keeping the same distance from a straight line. Our mirror over there represents some straight line. And the moving object is myself here. I have to move in such a way that I keep the same distance from the mirror. Watch me. Take two steps. Can you finish the rest? How am I moving relative to the mirror? Okay, and there's his license. So uh, Albert Dubé and Gift Machingabi. Uh, Creative Commons attribution they chose so for their for their one. Uh, so they made that on their phone. All right, they used their phone uh, and a little bit of free editing software, and then they put the uh, little pieces together. So very nice. I thought that was cool. Um, and I've got. I think I've shown you the one with the water. Have I? This one's also. Good morning. Today our topic is water. Water is important in our life. Every day we use water. At home, we use water for bathing. We use water for drinking, foam. Then also water, it exists in solid form. As you can see, I have some ice blocks with me. This is liquid water, which is frozen and liquid water and this is liquid water which is frozen we put it in the fridge then it freezes so water exists in solid form this is ice so water exists in solid form and with all right then she shows them gas and then there's her license um creative commons attribution she went for okay um uh, this was done during one of the workshops. So she got the hotel people running around organizing ice and steam and water. And then she grabbed me and said, I must be the cameraman. But she scripted it all. She chose the license, etc., And it was filmed with one shot, one take uh, using a cell phone. So all the little captions were put in afterwards. But if you notice, she just wanted one take so we had to do it three times <laughs> so until she was happy that we had got a version which she liked all right but it doesn't have to be a video all right so i just got excited because i thought this was very innovative and these are really resources which could be used etc um but it doesn't have to be a video so if you feel oh that's a bridge too far but i am happy in word or i am happy in powerpoint or I am happy in Excel, then devise a teaching and learning resource which can be distributed in those packages. All right, so you don't have to do a video. Um, I just liked those two examples. I thought they'd put their mind to it, they'd come up with a little script, and um, they made it come alive. And it was very local, very Zimbabwean, all right? Um, you could relate to it. It wasn't like some Chinese... Um, uh, resource, uh, resource or an American resource or nothing like that. All right, it's very local. So um, 
yeah so do you do you feel you understand what the assignment is let's ask for some questions or uh, any queries etc is it clear All right, I'm going to take that as a yes, that you are clear what has to be done. All right, so we, I've been with you for 40 minutes now. So um, uh, I don't want to just go on and on and on. But if you have a very quick look at tutorial four, you'll see it gives you the last final step. So let me just go back. So when we go to tutorial four, the idea now is um, how can you share your resource so that first section on edu connect tells you how to upload your resource all right so there are some videos explaining the process uh and then um uh it explains all about all the metadata so let me just have a look just jump deep into here Oh, yeah, here's all the metadata. What type of resource is it? Well, this is definitely a teaching and learning resource. It's something that so, you could use um, that learners could refer to. There's you where you license, need to put in your license, etc., uh, into the metadata. And the resource format. Well, in this case, it is a little video that we made using the cell phone. Now that you have filled in all the metadata, it's time to give them the actual file. So can you click in the all right, so it explained, the little videos explain what are the step-by-step -step processes to actually upload your resource into EduConnect. Um, uh, that is part of the assignment, but if you want, you can also publish on OER Commons. Now, OER Commons is a little bit more complex because there is a, um, it's international, and you have to find a home for your resource before you send it to them. So you've got to find a place on the internet where you can do that. So um, we we encourage you to use your your uh, your Google Drive as a place where you can put the resource before you go to OER Commons. But it's all explained here as well how to index your open resource on OER Commons. That's not part of the assignment. So if you feel oh no that's too complicated, then that's fine. EduConnect is in principle, very simple. So we want you to do that particular that particular approach. All right. So um, so what have you got left to do? So um, tonight you have to look at tutorial number four. Then you have to experiment with EduConnect, and then you've got to start uh, finalizing your OER. So what resource are you going to share with? EduConnect and potentially the world. All right. Keep in mind also that um, we've put, uh, let me just go to where I put it. Here it is. All right. Here's the assignment. That's how we're going to mark it. So uh, if you want, you can check um, have you scored all the points? All right. And that's how, how it will happen. Okay. Um, you can talk to uh, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, um, I'm hoping there will be a few of you who would like to volunteer to show us what you have created, and then we'll give you a showcase and you can tell us your design principles. Um, and then there's also a user survey. We want you to tell us um, what worked for you and what didn't. For example, quite a lot of you have been complaining about uh, connectivity, which we haven't had as bad as uh, in groups one and two. This group three seems to be more... seems to be uh, having more gremlins, more problems with um, connectivity. So we want you to capture all that in the survey. So we'll give you a survey tomorrow as well. So um, uh, please make sure that you're available at 1400 hours tomorrow. We're gonna uh, wrap up. Hopefully we're gonna showcase some of the, some of the um, new OERs that are going into the repository and there's an evaluation. Okay, any questions, queries about what's still to happen? Uh, Tapiwa? Sorry, you're still mute. 
All right. Uh, I would I like to take you a little bit to tutorial three. Mm -hmm. When uh, when we're talking about the five hours after the after the the notes, there was an activity. There was an activity that was designed of dragging and matching items. Which tools can you use to 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 come up with such an activity? All right. So you would like to let's just see if we can find it. Like this one, yeah, where you an drag them. Is that what you meant? Like that? Yeah, yeah, that activity. We which tools can you use to to make that activity? All right. So if you want to start, um, you obviously need a platform where you can sh share it. Um, so if you are, um, uh, this particular one was built using this piece of software. Let's see if I can get in. It's going to be to start a free trial. Uh, but just tell me about Articula. I don't need all this yet. Uh, sorry, let me just make it a bit smaller. It's very big. Um, okay, an overview. Uh, all right, so we use this thing called Rise, Rise 360. So Rise 360, um, uh, is what you've experienced with those four tutorials. So they were authored using this particular platform. And um, it's very easy to do. You don't need any technical expertise, et cetera. And um, we, we've actually uh, used it quite a lot. Um, the drawback is the license is quite expensive. All right, so this is not a piece of free software. You do get 30 days. Was it 30 days? Uh, uh, I think it was 60 days, if I remember correctly, 60 days uh, free tutorial, which is worth having a go and, and, and seeing how it works. So uh, um, all of those drag and drop and the flip cards and all of those type of things are actually part of Articulate Rise 360. All right. However, if you don't have the funds or your school is not keen to uh, get you authoring using uh, that particular piece of software, there are other authoring tools. So the one that's free is H5P, I think it's called. H5P. Um, and um, it encourages, it, it, it uh, gives you tools so that you can create HTML5 interactive uh, content. So if you are like me, I was a teacher for many years. I was a teacher for 14 years, high school. Um, I loved teaching the kids, but I also loved making stuff. All right. So I used to create websites for the kids and um, they, uh, it would take me all holidays to build it and then they would do it in two hours. But that was half the fun. I loved doing that. So if you find that you're also a bit like that, you love your kids, you love your teaching, like you said in the survey at the beginning, but you want to do some more designing and creation and authoring, then yeah, this is the route to go. All right. Then um, it's uh, authoring content online. So HTML5, provide you with this interactive tools in order to do that. So uh, let me just see if I can give you a demo. Let me just log in because um, I've already got an account. Sorry, there we go. It's me. Log in. Um, so if I want to go How do I do a new one? <laughs> I've gone. Uh, latest note. Oh, e edit. And I don't want to edit my account. Sorry, I've, I haven't been in here for a while. Uh, content author, Toronto Forum, Learning Design Principles, View All create new. All right. So um, so the types of things you can do is you can do multiple choice, fill in the blanks, you can create columns, you can do image hotspots. That means parts of the pictures become um, interactive. You can click on them. 
um, accordions are basically paragraphs that open and then they close again, so uh, open and shut. Flashcards you've uh, seen, true and false, summary, virtual tour, uh, and a couple of other bits and pieces. All right, so um, that's the other option. So articulate, RISE 360 for authoring and or um, h5p.org. All right, so those are two nice ones that I, that I know about. There are others. For example, if you want to make uh, animations, uh, you can go to PowToons. Uh, here we go. There's a free version of this. All right, so you can... Where did you go? All right. Um, so this is to try and make little animations and little videos. And the animations can be interactive. You can put little quizzes inside the video, etc. There's a free version uh, that you can use. And then they ask you to pay if you want to have all the fancy bells and whistles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so that's one that's uh, an, another authoring tool, which is very nice. I use this one. But it is, again, it's a bit expensive. Normally, my clients help pay for this. So, Vyond. Hi, I'm Ms. ECCE. Come on a journey with me. I will show you important aspects of my journey of being and becoming a professional. I'm 42 years old and have completed a diploma in ECCE. I'm employed as an early years teacher at a quality ECD center. For you to understand my journey, I'll unpack what being and becoming a professional in ECCE means. I will use signposts to give you an overview of the concepts and the content of being and becoming a professional. All right, so um, that's another one that you can use. That's Vyond. And then you can use your rise to kind of organize them if you want. So. Um, yeah, uh, if this is your thing, um, there's an enormous demand for uh, these type of uh, designers and authors at the moment. It's uh, Education is getting away from text-based uh, instruction and is now trying to incorporate video and animation and simulations and all that. But it requires creative and innovative uh, people and I know many of you as teachers are already in that in uh, uh, creative thinkers in terms of how to do your education. So I'm sure there's a lot of you in here who would be interested to go down that route. All right, but enough of that. Any other questions or queries? So you got your you have your plate full. You have to demonstrate to me that you can put together some creative little teaching and learning resource that you can uh, license it and that you can upload it into the EduConnect database. So uh, looking forward to seeing tomorrow what some of you have created. And uh, yeah, good luck. Uh, keep chatting in the WhatsApp, and um, I will see you tomorrow.